What's up guys, Dog back here again and we're back with another tutorial. This time we're going to be going over how you can make your server a cross-platform server using the Geyser and Floodgate plugin. We're going to be going through how to install, how to download and how to also go through the configuration to make sure the Bedrock can join on without needing any of the Java account, simply just with a Bedrock account joining onto your server. Easy as that. So to get started, come over to seekhost.co, grab yourself a server. You will require a server for this, whether it's self-hosted or hosted from a company. As you can see, we have small servers for just you and your few friends all large servers for you and a hundred or a few hundred people um, and of course we do have custom servers if you are looking for something different maybe more RAM maybe more storage anything like that let us know once you've got your server, just set it to paper 1.19. The reason I say paper 1.19, not spigot or bucket, is because paper is not only more optimized, but it works for both plugins anyway. So you get the best of both worlds. Next up, we're going to need two plugins for this. That's going to be the Geyser and the Floodgate plugin. Now, to find these, uh, come to geyser.org. I'll leave all the links in the description. What you're going to do is you're going to come over to download on the top. When you click on download, it's going to take you to the Geyser area, of which you're going to download the Geyser Spigot.char. This is going to be the latest one on the list. As you can see, the build history there. Uh, they build on it all the time constant updates works really well works really uh, well with the plugins as well so let's just go for the geyser spigot just click this and you're going to download the file once downloaded come over to the top left where you're going to find geyser mc we're going to click on that and then we're going to go over to floodgate from floodgate what you're looking for now is the master because this is the master copy that we need so click on master and you're going to find a floodgate um or is it that spigot there so floodgate spigot download that too so we've got the geyser and the floodgate spigot plugin files and that's all you're going to need server two plugins plugins that is completely it after that we just upload them a bit of configuration and we're good to go with our 1.19 server which is going to be cross-platform so let's stop the server first before we do anything now I would suggest doing it through files FTP file access but at least one of the two files is quite large it's not going to go through there so at this point we're going to have to use FileZilla to upload stuff now I or we suggest FileZilla for anything anyway because it's quick it's easy you can upload delete remove edit files on there quickly easily and there's no limits on uh, like there is on multicraft i'll have a video popping up right now um if you're not sure how to connect just a quick explanation of how to connect you go to your ftp file access it gives you all the information like the host details the port username and your password is your multicraft password once you download files you're going to see um, the areas to input this is in the top so you've got your host your username your password which is your multicraft password and then the port that you're going to find on your ftp file access click quick connect after that with a drop down menu it's going to remember it so you can just connect anytime afterwards super quickly without having to put your information in again so once we've connected to the server you're going to see that we have all the files for the server on the right hand side and what we're looking for here is plugins so if i double click on plugins you can see it's got bstats which is a folder that's just always in there um, and it's got no plugins in whatsoever on the left hand side this will probably be your downloads folder to select the folder you want to use on here just come on the left hand side here you can select what folder is showing in this table it's basically your pc so if i scroll up if i click on the desktop it's going to show me everything on the desktop and then i open my folder which contains my plugins for you it'll be in your downloads i've moved mine over to another folder just for ease of use now as we can see here i have got the floodgate and i've also got spigot so i'm going to highlight both of them and i'm going to drag them over to the right hand side which is my server side now what i'm doing is i'm not moving the entire file what filezilla does is it makes a copy so it's just made a copy from my pc to the server i'm going to have a copy of both on either side now with that we can now close down filezilla we can come back to our server and we can start our server what this is going to do is going to start um, all the files or you know yml config that the geyser has once that has uploaded the server is started we're then going to stop the server one more time we're going to make a final bit of config which is just changing your ip and port to match uh, the one in the config and then that's it you're good to go so with that started we are going to stop it one more time so we're going to stop the server now so now with the server stopped we are going to come over to files so we're going to go to config files and then we're going to look for the geyser yml jar so if we look down here you can see config.yml that's going to be for the geyser spigot so that's exactly the one that we want so let's just click on that and you're going to get brought to this page this is the last step basically where we just need to put our port and ip so it matches now as you can see from my server here at seekhost i've got an ip of 889999.8 and i've also got a port of 25613 so for the guys who are in the floodgate to recognize the server we're just going to import this now so if i come back over to the config file the first section that we need to change is here which it gives you the port of 19132 which is the default bedrock port which it isn't because obviously we are using a server so if i just copy and what i've done there is i just copied over the port from the server that we're using and i'm simply going to paste it in to replace that number right there making sure that i've left a little space between the brackets and the two 
if I highlight it there, if I'm able to, there we go. So you can see there's a one space between port and then the number. Now, next thing is we scroll down. This is optional here. You can change what you want to display in the message of the day one, the message of the day two, and also what appears for the Bedrock um, clients right here. You can change that, and then that will show differently as they go to log into the server. You don't need to, um, so it's completely up to you. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we're going to look. Uh, we're going to find auto here under the IP range, and it's going to be looking for the IP range or auto. However, what we want to do is we want to grab our IP. So rather than it looking for auto, it's going to be looking through our IP. We're going to go to auto right here next to address, and we're going to paste that. So um, if that happens, just make sure again you backspace and you leave one space between the address and the colon uh, before the number. Now that we have our IP in this section here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this section here as well. So another section where it's asking us for our port. So it's going to be three areas altogether. Two areas where you need to change your port for it to match and one area for the IP to match. So let's just copy the port over one more time. We're going to come over to this section here, paste it in exactly where that one was. The last thing we need to do is where it says auth type here or authentication type, we want it to floodgate. The reason we change this to floodgate is to stop that, um, what we used to have previously, where you used to have signed into a Java account or use a password or create an account. It doesn't need that. With floodgate, it just automatically joins if you're on Bedrock anyway. Don't need a Java account or anything like that. So with that all done, we can now go ahead and save. We've saved all of that. We come back to our server and we're gonna start our server back up and you're gonna find that you can now connect on with Bedrock clients. Or more, Bedrock can now connect to you because you're still running a Java server. However, you're running it so Bedrock clients can also come on. Now, one of the great things by doing this is that you can use many different plugins as well. You can use the grief prevention to make plots, uh, safe plots for areas. You can use the village market plugin, which I've also done a video on. I'll leave the link for all of these uh, videos down in the description. So you can use the villager market for shops, player shops, admin shops, spawn egg shops. And I've got a very special video which I'm going to be doing on my channel, which if I'm able to, I'll have popping up right now, which is going to be how to make a universal uh, server, which is going to be letting Bedrock, Java and any version on as well. So um, check out the channel if you do want to check that out as well. That video will be coming out soon. Now, as we can see, if we come to the console, um, Floodgate and uh, Geyser have now been activated. They work. If they didn't work, you would normally have a warning sign route around here talking about the port or the IP not matching. That's usually what happens if you don't change your IP and port to match on the config. Once you do, that's it, it's fine. If I go to login on Bedrock now, straight away login, no pass or login screens or anything like that. So thanks for watching guys. For any more tutorials like this, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest uh, videos coming up on notification to you first. And of course, if you haven't got yourself a server, head on over to seekerhost.co and grab yourself one. Use the code 25 off for a 25% off discount off your first server. And for any extra help, make sure to reach out to support and we can help you set it up. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye.